morning YouTube. What is up everybody? How's it going? I haven't done a talk video in a long time. Uh, pretty much I've been doing some training. I've been training a student, student of my own and I'm trying to um, get more students but nobody really wants to learn martial arts. Um, they were to do like calisthenics or they were to do weightlifting or some type of sport. Um, so if I just have one student, I'm happy. If I get more students later on down the road, then I'll be even more happy. But like I said, you know, I'm just, you know, training one student at a time. Um, but right now, um, I only have one student so far. Um, he's progressing. Um, he still has a lot of work to go. Um, but he's a white belt. So, you know, I gotta, you know, basically tell him what combos to do, train him to what, to do what combinations to do, you know, where he can get him down, you know, where he can practice on his own, at his home, and it's, it's like, really good, get really good at some of the stuff that I'm teaching him, and so, when it comes to training somebody, you know, you gotta be patient, you know, you gotta be patient with the student. And that's what I see most instructors don't have. Sometimes. When I go to schools. Or when I used to train at schools. And I look at how the instructor handles their students. And most of the time, you know, most instructors, they want you to just get it down pat on the first day. And I'm like... And I don't care how long you have to stay later to get it done. So, it's like they just don't have patience. You know, some do, some don't. And to me, you know, as I see it, you know, martial arts, you know, martial artists or instructors when teaching, in my experience, you know, you gotta have patience. Because you gotta have patience, you know, for your student to grow, to make, you know, make him understand, or her, make him or her understand on um, the lesson on what you're teaching. And basically, you know, you know, have her take her, have him or her take his time learning the art. It's like, you know, if you rush the person to sell see if you rush the person to learn some, if you rush the person person to learn some, they don't want to learn. They don't want to learn it at all, and that's the thing. And most instructors nowadays, they want you to rush at everything you do, and it's like. Especially if you go to a school, you know, you try learning these techniques, you know, <laughs> do like a four to five minute hour class, 45 minute class up to an hour, then, and then you're trying to remember everything that you've been taught when you get home, and you know, it's always frustrating, and so what I did when I, when I was training on my own, at a dojo. And when I was, you know, training in any, any dojo, when I would do a class, and basically I just took my time at it, and I didn't rush like the others. I took my time and I worked on um, what I could remember out of the class, and and I worked on it on, on the solo drills that we did in the class. And I work on it for about all week until I got good at it on what I could remember. In which, so when you end up doing 
turn to somebody, you always gotta make it fun. You know, you can't just be serious all the time. And, and that's the thing, you know, otherwise, I come to realize with my student, my student, he's teaching me on how not to be serious too much all the time. When I train, you know, and that's the plus side. That's the plus side about it. And, you know, I want them to do good, but, you know, it's just I, you know, I want them to be trained right. You know, it ain't, it ain't really goofing off. But, you know, he's making it where I can't, you know, they can't really be too serious. But when I when I train the drills, you know, I always tell him, you know, if he messes up, I always make him do one more extra on the pads. You know, because he always messes up. And, you know, that's how he gets the drill, drills down. And... So like I said, he's progressing, and you know I don't know when I'm gonna promote him to orange belt yet. I haven't really decided in my system that I do in Jeep Kemp Kwando. The reason why I call it Jeep Kemp Kwando because it's a mixture of Jeep Kendo. It's a mixture of Kemp Karate, or Kemp means karate based the way of the fist. Same with Chi means another way of fist, but the Chinese way. Kemp means the Japanese way. And Quan Do means Taekwondo, the way of the foot. Chi, Kemp, Quan. It's a new system, um, I, you know, I've worked, I've worked on it so long, and, you know, my, my system is meant really technically not for tournaments, it can be for tournaments and stuff, you know, you can use it a lot, utilize it for tournaments, you know, if they allow low line kicking in tournaments, but, um, if, they don't, then you have to learn to practice high kicks. And I always start my students off low on the low line area on kicking. I don't try to get them to kick too high just yet. You know, I want them to get the technique down. That's how my instructor worked with me on was, you know, work on getting the technique down first before you progress getting higher with the kicks. And and that's a, you know, that's with anything, you know. You always start out slow, you know, you always learn to progress. You always learn to, you know, better yourself at each time when you train and when you do something active in the martial arts or in fitness all around. Cause you don't become a master at something overnight. And you know, on everything you do in life, it's always a journey. And that's how I see it. You know, it's always a journey. You always have a long life journey ahead of you. And, and you know, set goals. You know, that's the number one thing that I always tell my students. Always set goals, you know, on what you want to work on. And, and that's the thing. Drinking morning, morning coffee. And that's the thing pretty much is that basically you know just you know train your drills train your body you know do calisthenics which is body weight exercise you know you don't have to lift weights to get strong and you, you know if you lift weights that's a plus you know that's just good on your part you know trying to get strong and but you know get bigger, whatever, you know. <laughs> That's the reason why how I started in lifting weights was because I wanted to get bigger in muscle size and get get more better shape. So I combine all of them together, you know, make my own system, which I train on the wooden dummy, I train on the speed bag, I train on the heavy bag, I train on weights. I mean, I train, 
Now, I even trained in a calisthenics. So, I do six different activities in my sport that I do, in my style. And basically, it's just training. And that's all it is. That's the reason why I call it Jim Kwanda. It's because it can fit in in any, any sport there is. And either it's weightlifting, calisthenics, um, boxing, kickboxing, karate, uh, like traditional karate, um, and even a little kempo on the side, and wing chun. So, I basically incorporated my own system of stuff that I've learned from other people into my own art. And, you know, I'm always willing to train with people. You know, I love training with people because, you know, you can learn something from somebody else, even though they're not, a, you know, a real expert, but you can always learn from their advice on what to do. And, that's just how I see it in fighting, and that's the thing, you know, most people don't even really do that. You know, they don't take to consider it on taking advice from others that aren't experts, and, you know, you never know, you know, that advice may help you in a fight. And from being a non-expert fighter or professional at that, and so you just gotta learn to, you know, Roll with the punches and go with the foot. That's the way my my system works. You know, you gotta roll with the punches and go with the foot. And that's my model on what I use um, in my training. Ro ro go with the punches, roll. Yeah. Roll with the punches, go with the foot. That's my model. And and that's with everyday life, you know. You gotta get up, you know, motivate yourself to do something positive throughout the life, throughout your life, every day. You know, you gotta get up, you know, think of something positive. You know, be creative in your workouts, you know, do what you can do to um, maintain your art, your craft, your hobby, whatever it is you may do, and just do something active and be yourself. Be, be who you are, be safe, train hard, train smart, but most of all, do your research, raw combat, 7th on 4, sign